I saw a lot of this talk. It was, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, saw this too, you probably did, but Pascal Siakam was tre- trending on Twitter. The reason why is because John Hollinger from The Athletic, I believe, wrote that the Golden State Warriors are looking to make a splash move and trade James Wiseman for an established player. And basically the trade that popped up where John Hollinger in his article wrote that Pascal Siakam is a name to watch. And in order to trade Wiseman and the seventh overall pick to Toronto for Pascal, Wiggins would have to be in that deal to make the money work. And you're looking at Cam Reddish right now. He How much does he have? Four points, bro. Yes, four he points. Oh my god! No, I'm just excited that he's in the game. That you're was really all I was excited. All right, about. but let's listen up and let's let's talk about these Raptors and Warriors the mock trade. Giannis has eight. So shut up. Let's talk about the Warriors and um, Raptors mock trade. So if you're game. the Warriors or if you're the Raptors, are you doing this trade? Are you are you if you're the Warriors, do you want Pascal Siakam? Are you willing to give up Wiggins, Wiseman, and the seventh pick? And if you're the Raptors. Are you trading Pascal Siakam to the Warriors and getting back those assets? Well, if I'm the Raptors, absolutely. I think that would be a great steal on the Raptors' part. You know, getting, what was it, the seventh pick, the 14th pick, Wiggins and Wiseman? I personally believe that if the, Warrior, if the Warriors were to trade Wiseman, Wiggins to Toronto for Siakam. Probably just the seventh. It would just be the seventh. Because oh, even I think 14th, it would be, they, they would not want to. So even much. still, that's still, up, that's still that you get so a guy, much. you get a guy with Andrew Wiggins who we can all agree. I think he found himself last year in being that elite defender for the Golden State Warriors. You know, having a sub, subpar three-point shooting, finding his mid-range. I think he definitely improved, even though the numbers may not show it. Watching his game, you've seen improvement. You've seen that drive back in him. And then in Wiseman, you get a young guy, a promising guy, a mobile big, a guy who fits this NBA narrative, who can you can still work on his game. And I know everybody over here trusts Toronto's player development staff to work on his game. And then you get the seventh pick, where you can pick another player in Moses Moody. Maybe you can develop Keon Johnson, you know, or something to pair up with the fourth pick that you already have. So I think that would be a steal in itself for Toronto. On the Warriors' end, that's that deal sucks. <laughs> that deal absolutely is terrible because Andrew Wiggins has established himself as that he can be that third star, fourth star, wherever they want him to be for the Golden State Warriors. You're good, bro. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're not sweating it, that hot, like that. Man. It is it's hot. hot. You get why you got Wiseman, who's who. who Everybody likes to bash him, but he didn't play basketball for almost a year and had to learn a completely different system and go difficult one a too. Difficult ball spacing, ball movement, free flowing system in Golden State with a bunch of guys he does he never played with. So that was a difficult, and he still played all right. I think he'll be much better. And you're losing your seventh pick, where you can bring a smart guy in in a Moody or maybe a Davion Mitchell. And realistically, you know, Scotty could fall. Re- realistic, he won't. But no. nah. one more pick. I don't think. Okay. But, you know, he okay. could fall. You never uh-huh. know. But realistically, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond. First of all, Steph and Draymond showed they still got it. They showed they're still geared up for another run. Clay, even if he – he'll he'll still be the shooter he's going to be. He may not be defensively what he is, but he's still going to be that knockdown 40% three-point shooter. Steph. We know that. You got guys like Kevon Looney who knows his role. He's a good defensive big. Toscano, he found his role. He's a glue guy. You saw promise in Jordan Poole. He's that good bucket off the bench, six man. He can score. You bring in level-headed guys like Davion Mitchell, Corey Kisper, who's a knockdown shooter, who also said he models his game after Klay Thompson, so he's going to understand the system walking in. He played for Gonzaga. That is a smart system. They know what they're doing. They're high-level IQ guys. I don't see the Warriors making a move for Pascal Siakam because I don't think, you know, he shot poorly from the three-point line. He kind of, you know, he he's a guy who, he's, a, he's just a weird player. In a system like that, I don't think he'll flow in it too much. And I think this team, being that, like he said, when Steph Curry was healthy, this was a fifth-seeded team, and even put teams like the Lakers in trouble, yep. put teams like the Clippers in trouble. They had some very competitive games at the end of the, the year in the play-in. So I think this team really doesn't need to make a splash move. Just need to you know, hit right on this draft, bring in some mid-level guys, and I think they'll be right back in the picture. Wow, great job taking all my talking points. Cheers. <laughs> I'm sorry, took bro. all my talking points. So then I'll talk for you, bro. I apologize. Uh, so bro. before hearing the trade package, I did like it for both sides. Of course you did. But then you hear what Golden State has to give, and then it's a no-brainer. Toronto wins this trade by far. So then to go to Golden State side, you look at what Pascal Siakam did when he had Kawhi Leonard on his squad, and he didn't have to be that number one option in Toronto. 
He was extremely efficient on that championship run. Without Pascal Siakam, they do not win a championship, and I will stand by that. He was am- he was amazing that postseason run. And even this year, as a number one, 21.4, 7.2 rebounds, r- around five assists over one steal a game. Obviously, that three-point percentage is 29.7, basically 30%. I don't hate that out of a big man, especially on the offense that that he's he would be running with, which is a, a predominantly shooting squad. You could live with thirty percent, especially how I've seen him in the past be a, a, a definitely efficient number two option. I like the move, but for what they'd be giving up, it'd be way too much. You look at what Toronto would be doing there. You still have OG Ananobi at that small forward guard that Pascal played like the small forward power forward position all season. You have OG as a backup there. You have Chris Boucher, who the comment section told me religiously he's not a five. He is a four. So <laughs> he is a power forward, and he'd be filling in that role. And I think I that think offensively. I think the comment section will also tell you that Siakam did not play the three much, and it was OG was a starter. No, for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm with you there. But I'm just saying. No, because I heard that he was a backup from you okay. like just now. So I don't know if you misspoke or like. No, no. Like, I just okay. mean like he, he, he could, he's the, the hybrid, the, the small forward power forward. And he's obviously more for, more so the power forward, but you. I'm just talking both positions. You have OG there, you have Boucher there. You'd be bringing in Andrew Wiggins, who could who plays the small forward. You'd be bringing in Wiseman, who could play the the four five. Probably you'd have him playing the five since Boucher isn't a five. Wiseman is not playing the four. No, for sure, yeah. for sure. Uh, so and then you get the seventh pick, potentially the fourteenth pick, but like you mentioned, probably wouldn't happen. Toronto would be stealing from from Golden State to a degree and putting themselves in a, a great rebuild position, especially if they're going to be losing Lowry, especially if they're considering trading Siakam. They're setting themselves up nicely for the future. I disagree with you guys slightly. I think this is a bad trade for both sides. And, and the reason why is because, for one, for Golden State, like you mentioned but didn't mention, their model pre-Kevin Durant was strength in numbers. I think with Curry, they were as good. Their record percentage was as good was good enough to be the fifth seed in the West. They're bringing back Clay. You have two lottery picks. You have Wiseman, who could be healthy. Poole is also going to get better, and Wiggins also a year. I mean, two years in that system, going on his third, will be much better as well. I think that's good enough to compete in the West if those rookies come in right away and produce, and if they draft a Davion Mitchell, who's going to be twenty three when the season starts, and Corey Kispert who is mature beyond his years, then I think they'll be fine. With Toronto, though, this is a little bit weird because if you get Wiggins, you get Wiseman, the star- and you don't re-sign Lowry, the starting lineup would be Fred, Wiggins, OG, Boucher, Wiseman, which isn't too horrible. Mm-hmm. But I think that if Pascal gets traded – you have to blow the entire thing up. You have to try to find a third team that's going to take on Wiggins and not get him for yourself. You have to trade away Fred Van Vliet. Boucher is 28 years old. I mean, but I got, I got something for you guys right now. They have the fourth pick that we've said on this podcast. It could either be Suggs or Kaminga. I think you're going to say what I was about to ask you. If Toronto gets the 7th and 14th overall pick, is there a chance they can call Orlando and say hello we want to trade you seven and fourteen for five, and then they draft Suggs and Kaminga. I was gonna say Suggs and Barnes because you you brought up the fact that I don't think Wig. I think you know because like you said, Fred Wiggins, um, OG Pascal, and then Wiseman. We're assuming. I'm um, no Siakam isn't there no more. Yeah, duh. So I I think Scotty being initiating himself in there if they do draft him and then taking that four spot, I think that would be wonderful for him. Honestly, I, I was going to ask you, what do you, what do you think about them taking Scotty at four or maybe calling in and getting that fifth pick and taking Suggs and Scotty? I think that would be gr- a great draft. Yeah, I agree. And oh, even man. if they – even Giannis, if Giannis might be out right now. Oh, wow. But uh, we're, uh, let's, right, let's finish this up. Sorry, you got him. Yeah, yeah, bro. Oh, my God. This is the thing, right? So let's say – Suggs gets drafted. I would assume Fred gets traded, mm. but let's say he doesn't get traded. Right. I think Wiggins gets. Yeah, let's say Wiggins gets dealt. You know, if this was 2015, Raptors fans would be drooling over <laughs> Wiggins being their star player because of that Canadian connection, but we know who he is now. Let's say Wiggins gets shipped off to a third team. The Raptors would have a starting lineup of Suggs, Van Vliet, OG, Kaminga, or Barnes, and Wiseman. 
And off the bench, Boucher. We're f- totally forgetting about Gary Trent, who could come back. Very Malachi true. Flynn. Have to him. Malachi Flynn, like, I don't think that would be too bad, but I'm not sure. Then again, because, you know, it depends. D- because right now, Toronto's in a tough position. Do you want to keep Siakam and hopefully at that fourth pick get that franchise-changing player in Suggs or Kaminga? Like, I think Suggs is a floor general. I don't think he's franchise-changing. Kaminga has that potential, but then again, he's really raw. Toronto and Masai Ujiri might be watching this team right now and saying, we don't really have many ways to get to championship contention. Mm -hmm. So the best way would to would be to trade Siakam, get pick seven and 14, get a really young player in Wiseman and package seven and 14, four, five, and get two of the top five players in the draft. What about this? Four, seven, 14 for one. I don't think they do that. I I, I think Kate is, Kate is locked in at one. Because what Detroit keeps saying is we're looking at every trade. So I'm saying based off what they're saying, what a four, seven, 14, and maybe even throw in next year for that number one pick. I really don't think they, they do that. I don't I think, think either, Kate, but the I way, think Kate is just different. But the way they're talking about it is if Detroit's going to, oh, we might trade this, we might trade it that. It would be so dumb to do that. That would be crazy. It would be crazy, though. It would, but I, I think. Give a amount. But, you know, Masayu Jiri is obviously, he has hindsight. He does things that nobody's thinking about. But right now, I you know, not to toot my own horn, but I think I just came up with something that not a lot of people are thinking about either. Mm-hmm. Getting picks 7 and 14 and packaging that for 5 and drafting Suggs and Kaminga. Because I think the ra- like Scotty Barnes is a, is a fine player. But you would draft Kuminga in a situation with OG yes. being there already? Yes, because this is the thing. I think Scotty's a fine player, but I also believe that the Raptors believe in their development. Right. And I think Kuminga, his ceiling is Paul George. So I really do think they would bet on that star potential over Scotty. Hmm. OG brings in defense. Wiseman has a size to be a rim protector. Suggs is a great defender. Van Vliet is, will still be there, mm-hmm. and we we don't know. You know, I just I'm just under the assumption that if the Raptors so were wait, to but trade you Siakam, wouldn't, you wouldn't, they're going into a full rebuild. But like, you, okay, so you wouldn't tr- agree with you that. wouldn't you wouldn't trust your player development with Suggs and Barnes. That's a good point. Because because I think, but who has a higher ceiling, Barnes? Well, or I think both of them are smarter Kuminga. players than Kaminga. And Barnes would fit in that four spot. Yeah, I'm saying in, yeah. in a high in a high IQ system in Toronto, I think you know Suggs and Barnes would fit more, and you have OG and Obi being there. I think Kuminga is going to take some time. So let's say the Raptors trade Fred along with Siakam, and they don't even they even you know ship off Wiggins to a third team. They could have a starting lineup of Suggs. They would probably have way more picks than that. So listen to this. Yeah. They would have a starting lineup of Jalen Suggs, Gary Trent, OG, Scotty Barnes, or Kuminga and Wiseman. That's a really young team, but I don't, you know, it, like I said, you know, what do you guys think the Raptors should do? Do you think they should go into a full rebuild or are they still good enough to compete and be a championship I contending think, team? I think they were okay with that championship run. I think they, they, they love it. They're okay with it. They're calm with it. I think to be in contention, they're like a star away, but I, or a star away or Kate away from being back in contention. So, and I think they have the right, the proper tools to you know, get a star. But to be fair, Toronto didn't play a home game all last season. Very true. And they dealt with a lot of things in their locker room and on their team. So they can be in contention next year with the same guys, you know, with these young guys coming in. I think they're ty- that type of team where these young guys can buy in and they can be at that contention. I think Suggs, you know, is good enough to where he can, you know, not make them as competitive, but he can, you know, fill in that Kyle Lowry space and be a competitive guy. You know, he's – he plays defense hard he's a really good floor spacer he knows what to do he's a smart high level iq guy and same thing with barnes if they get that pick so i think those two guys are good enough for if not year one year two toronto will be back in contention